Thank you, Andrew. I'm now going to move on to talk about the economy. Another key reason Canadian cities should strive to emulate the collaborative governance structure of Silicon Valley is due to the successful economy. The Silicon Valley makes up 7.7% of California's population, but contributes to 9.3% of all jobs in the state, as well as 9.6% of California's GDP. In terms of jobs, the job growth rate in 2014 was 4.1% adding nearly 58,000 new jobs to the economy. This job growth rate is higher than that of California overall, which is only 2.5%, and the United States, States, which is 1.8%. Additionally, Silicon Valley employment levels are well above the levels before the 2008 recession. The job growth rate is not only in technology sectors, but across nearly all major areas of economic activity, including community infrastructure and healthcare and social services. Unemployment rates are down across the Silicon Valley, notably in all racial and ethnic groups as well. Employment growth since 2010 has occurred across all types of jobs, including Tier 1 jobs, which are high-skill and high-wage jobs, Tier 2, which are mid-skill and mid-wage jobs, and Tier 3, which are low-skill and low-wage jobs. Earnings in the Silicon Valley remain much higher than that of the rest of the state and the nation. The average annual earning in Silicon Valley as of 2014 was close to 116,000 compared to the 71,000 in California and 61,000 in the U.S. as a whole. Innovation is a driving force behind Silicon Valley's economy, and it is a vital source of regional competitive advantage. The number of Silicon Valley patents registration, um, registrations continues to rise, reaching 16,975 in 2013, which was almost 2,000 more than the previous year. Additionally, venture capital investments in Silicon Valley shot up, to two, shot up in 2014, reading $7.4 billion in the first three quarters of the year alone. This demonstrates that regions with thriving innovation habits can support a vibrant ecosystem to start and grow businesses. Entrepreneurs in the region started almost 3,000 new firms in Silicon Valley between 2011 and 2012. Now moving on to lessons learned from Silicon Valley. Due to the success of the collaborative model of Silicon Valley, Many cities and countries around the world would like to emulate the Silicon Valley and their collaborative model. And we are arguing that not only is it possible to emulate the collaborative model, but many Canadian cities should strive to do so. This model starts at the local level. Local governments are up to the task of creating good governance and innovation. However, there are currently significant barriers from higher levels of government. In Canada, the powers of local government are severely limited. However, the Silicon Valley collaborative model can be used as a way of reframing traditional industry policies, which are more of a top-down decision-making system, and instead allow for a bottom-up approach through further local and regional development. In addition to the increased autonomy of regional governments, the Silicon Valley model would work best in Canadian cities that have a large urban makeup and strong research investments in place. This leads to our expert interview, if you want to flip to the next slide. We were fortunate enough to have the opportunity to interview Dr. Stephen McLaughlin, who is a professor and chair of Georgia Tech University's School of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Stephen McLaughlin is also a lecturer at Stanford University and has three startup companies he has invested in the Silicon Valley, in which he travels to the region on a monthly basis. He also happens to be my uncle. So Stephen started off by telling us that not only is the collaborative governance of Silicon Valley a model that Canadian cities should strive to emulate, but it is one that Canadian cities are successfully achieving. Namely, the Kitchener-Waterloo region is among the top five in Canada for trying this model and and succeeding because of the strong university talent. The technology-centric investment of money from the government Um, also contribute to its success. To further demonstrate Kitchener-Waterloo as the Silicon Valley of the North, we have a short video that Andrew will play now. The video demonstrates the strong collaboration between the university, larger companies, as well as startup companies. 
Stephen also outlined Toronto um, as another region where the Silicon Valley has been thriving. Toronto has numerous universities with high skill levels and talent in computer and technology programs. Toronto also has the advantage of a diverse population. Toronto has what Richard Florida, an American urban studies theorist at Toronto's Rotman School of Management called the creative class, which is a region with high concentrations of technology workers, artists, music musicians, lesbians, and gays. He stated that this group of people exhibit a higher level of economic development. The creative class fosters an open, dynamic, personal, and professional urban environment. This environment attracts more creative people as well as business and capital. The GTA is a large urban space with a diversified population and strong local government. Collaboration from all sectors has led to success in the technology sectors and high economic benefits for those living in the region. Steve also suggested Vancouver, Montreal, and Ottawa as cities also able to emulate the collaborative governance structure due to the diverse populations, their large urban spans, and reputable universities with high talent for collaboration and research. Steve said that the Silicon Valley model is one that is becoming ever more important as the demographics are shifting. Young people are becoming much more talented and educated and there is a, a shift in our generation. Young graduates of technological and engineering fields no longer dream of working for these large companies such as Hewlett Packard, but instead are looking into small startup companies. These small startup companies with the support and collaboration of all sectors are truly beneficial for the Canadian economy as it grows employment within the regions and in turn creates a larger tax base. He argued that even if these startups are only five employees at the beginning, these are jobs that are added to our community. From his experience investing in multiple startup companies in Silicon Valley, Steve outlines the importance of not only local university for research and development, but also of the government. The startup companies in Silicon Valley all receive a relatively small loan from the government with no strings attached. If the company crashes and burns, they don't owe the money back. However, if the company succeeds, they are to pay the money back to the government. This type of investment from the government, while small, was absolutely critical to the success of many of his startups to not only bolster the confidence, but to get the company off the ground and running. In conclusion, the Silicon Valley collaborative model is one that should be adopted, if not already, by many Canadian cities. We thank you for listening to our presentation, and Andrew will now answer any questions that you may have. Thanks.